Welcome to the Tuesday night's FFTI Triumph Over Targeting podcast, and I'm your host, Ella. You can join us live, which I encourage people to do, every Tuesday and Thursday beginning at 9 p.m. Eastern Standard Time by calling 515-606-5187 and entering the ID 4000014 pound. This is a solution educational activism-based podcast, but the views and opinions of my guests and participants are not necessarily my own personal views and opinions. And my goal, of course, is that everyone can obtain something out of tonight, especially a feeling of empowerment. If you're new to the call, please stay on and we will get you some support, some helpful links, some websites, and connect you with others. You can also visit our website, freedomfortargetedindividuals.org. And if you're interested in subscribing to the newsletter, just go to the bottom of any page and hit subscribe. And you can also email me directly at fftiorg at gmail.com in case we don't get to you. Uh, tonight. And then tonight we have a very interesting and compelling guest. His name is Kevin, and also I have with me my partner in crime, Dr. Matthew Aaron. Hi, guys. Hello. Hello. And before, and before we get to the interview, I have Janie here with me, and she and a gentleman that goes by AB are uh, preparing for a TI Day rally in New York City, so she wants to be able to give some of that information. So this is this goes out to all the New Yorkers out there. So go ahead, Janie. Okay, thanks, Ella. So Ed is going to hold a conference call for, the, for New York City, and the number is area code 605-468-8740, and the access code is 865-630. And this was hold, held on freeconferencecall.com every Saturday night at 8 p.m. Eastern Standard Time. His ID is Eduardo Colon. All together, no spaces, no punctuation in between. Thanks, Ella. Okay. Thank you, Janie. And so now we'll get back to the interview. And again, this is very important, this TI Day that's coming up on August 29th, 2019. And this will be an annual event. And this is the second annual event and so we're very excited about this and we really need everybody to get up off their seats and get out there and connect with others and go out there and try to educate the public in a professional manner and we'll be working on this movement and that can only help us grow and proceed to start to expose this so I'm going to go ahead and turn it over to you Matthew and I'll let you start it okay thanks a lot I would just like to add to that announcement that I would encourage uh, people in the New York area and elsewhere to go to the Alliance to End Targeting website, and that is www.alliance to end targeting, all one string of letters, org, and to navigate through those pages. And the different rallies have set up their different GoFundMe pages. And because we know that New York City is a go and also is a very important city, being the financial capital of the U.S. and also being a heavily targeted city, we would encourage you to donate to the, to the New York City rally so that they can have the funds to, to get the uh, permits and rentals that they need. So I would just add that, that each rally has its own donation page. So we want to see New York City uh, be a big success. But um, that's all I wanted to say and, uh, about that. And I also wanted to um, mention, uh, Ella knows this already. Ella knew Kevin before. But I had the privilege of meeting Kevin at the Sacramento rally. And um, how are you doing, Kevin? Are you on the line? Yes, I'm here. Okay, so it was, it was really great to meet you. And you did share... Um, a lot about your story with me and uh, you know we thought um, it would be you've been on these calls for for quite a while yes. and we thought um, we'd like to give you this opportunity to share your story because um, my, my main interest uh, is that um, I, I like to hear different stories because I think a lot of us perhaps all of us have this impression or this pretty good understanding that this targeting uh, crime or set of crimes is happening in a lot of different ways in a lot of different communities. And what it looks like is that uh, a lot of different groups are doing it too. So um, I'd like to start off by 
if you wouldn't mind, can you give a kind of paint a picture for us of what your life was like, where you lived, and uh, what uh, kind of give us the setting in in the in the time period just before you became targeted, so we can kind of have a context for for the rest of what you're going to say. Yes, um, I have basically a you know normal regular life, and um, I was able to do whatever I wanted to do and work and so forth, and um, things like that. But I used to um, hang around the wrong crowd when I was younger. You know, I'm older now, but um, I have a past. You know what I'm saying? The gang history or whatever. But to make a long story short, um, I wasn't affiliated anymore for many, many years. You know, and um, Something um, had occurred in the area in Los Angeles where I lived at to where some of the um, young um, gang members, bangers rather, um, had did a drive-by shooting in front of a store and shot an eight-year-old girl, blew her face off. She was sitting in the car while her dad was in the store um, getting some out of the store. She was on the passenger side, and um, they shot and killed the eight-year-old girl, blew her face off. So um, I had uh, testified against them in uh, court and everything. And um, I became targeted shortly after that, after the trial was over with. They had, it was two trials. After the last trial was over with, then that's when I became heavily targeted. And um, it's been about about 10 years now. And um, it's just been awful for me, you know. And, and I know the people that's targeted me for a fact you know, I know I personally grew up with the people and everything else, and they're just evil, bad, dirty people. And, um, you know, they don't care about nobody. You know what I mean? They don't care about humanity. They don't care about humans. You know what I mean? they like the lowest of the, of the barrels. You know, they're just bad people. That's what they do is harm and hurt people anyway, you know, besides the targeting. That's what they, you know, known and used to doing anyway. So, So what they did... You know what I mean? So ever since I've been targeted, what they they trying to play God, and um, you know what I mean? Bring up my whole entire my whole entire life story, um, like everything that I done did bad. You know, like they perfect, like they some good guys or something, and I'm uh, trying to you know what I mean? Do some revenge kind of things against me. You know what I'm saying? From when I was young, even from when I was a kid, they trying to bring up stuff like that in the past. My whole entire life. You know what I mean? So they're trying to use that as an excuse, you know what I mean, to target me um, after the court thing and everything. So basically what I'm trying to say is when I went to court and everything and testified, they just opened up a whole can of worms, period, for my whole entire life, and they feel they can give them permission to do whatever they want to me. And that's, yeah, that's what's yeah. going on with me. Yeah, yeah. So they want to take me way back to when I was a teenager and stuff like that, you know and try to use that stuff as an excuse, whatever I did wrong in the past, because I'm not perfect. I got a past. But, um, so they trying to bring everything when I was young up, you know what I mean, to use that against me. That's not no excuse or no reason to uh, do do nothing, you know what I mean, to what as far as what they're doing to me, period. Well, that, that's, that's certainly true, and uh, that's, I'm, I'm sorry to hear about um, – what you've been through and what you've been through for 10 years and also the horrific uh, crime that you witnessed when, when it all started. And uh, I, I just I'm, I want to clarify a few details. Uh, so uh, were you what's called a state's witness or were you um, – so the, the police uh, – obviously you witnessed this crime and because of your past associations in the gang culture – did the police provide you any any kind of protection uh, leading up to the yeah. to the trial? Because I, I imagine yeah. there was a yeah. delay between between when you witnessed it and when the case when the when it went to trial. There must have been a delay, and so during that period, were you targeted during that period? And did the police provide you any kind of protection during that period? Um, in fact, um, no, I wasn't targeted during that period, and uh, they did. Um, the judge even um, ordered me protection. The district attorney ordered me protection. Um, in the, in the um, detectives, you know, they had relocated me numerous, numerous, and several times. They, um, you know, got me places to live in different, um, you know, areas or whatever. But um, unfortunately, they was finding out where I was at. 
you know what I'm saying, and stuff like that. And I I was wondering how in the hell do they always know where I'm at every time I move. You know what I mean? I was getting, a, you know, stalking and, you know what I mean, cars following me and stuff like that. And, um, you know, people standing in front of my house just stirring, literally stirring at, stirring at my house, you know, stuff like that. And then, um, you know what I mean, I leave and stuff like that, and, and, and I relocate, I tell the car to detectives and whatever and tell them what's going on, and then they relocate me again, you know what I mean, move me somewhere else and get a court order from the judge and the DA and all that, and they'll move me again. And they did that like at least three or four times. And um, so basically when I think about it right now as I speak, so they I was being targeted then um, because they was always knowing, finding out exactly where I was at, and they was coming by stalking. That was before it got before they got me uh, deep off into the program for all this okay. um, horrific stuff that they're doing to me now. It wasn't bad right. like that. It just started off briefly with the target, um, with the stalking at first. Okay. And, and during that time, uh, obviously the certain members of the police force knew where you were in these, um, in these protective, uh, protective accommodations. So do, do you have any indication that the police were orchestrating this against you, or 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 what is your uh, view on that? No, not at not at all. I mean, they was um on my side. You know what I mean, a hundred percent. Okay. In fact, um, they had arrested and sent one a uh, couple people to jail behind that. You know what I mean? But that was way before I even knew or even heard of. You know what I mean? Targeting individuals. I didn't know nothing about this. Never heard about it. Nothing. But you know what I mean? Okay. They, um, yeah. I was getting harassed and threatened was being made on my life from a couple of Pacific individuals, individuals. So the detectives put out warrants for them and, and, and arrested them, went to court, everything else, and they went to prison, you know what I mean, for, for like about seven years for that, literally. Okay. Okay, so... They, uh, wasn't, so they, they wasn't involved in uh, whatsoever, you know, they wasn't... Okay. Um, they, they was on my side. They was like really protecting and serving for real in my case. Okay, that's interesting. So I'll, I'll throw out some interpretations just from my viewpoint. And again, I'll qualify that these are just um, speculations and interpretations. But based on what you said, that you have no indication that the police were doing this, yet somehow you're stalking and being followed and surveilled by what seemed like elements linked to uh, the gang culture or organized crime, however you want to say it, indicates that that, that uh, group uh, that was orchestrating the targeting against you uh, to p- possibly to scare you from testifying, uh, to prevent you from testifying, that they are somehow, they have more capabilities, more um, knowledge, and essentially more power than the police. They, they are, they, are uh, they have more access to your whereabouts that they're somehow, you know, um, I guess, for lack of a better word, uh, above the police. Um, yes, you're right. Um, because um, when, um, when I do, when I was going when I was going back and forth to court, you know, because murder trials it, it lasted for years. You know what I mean? For real, literally for years and years. But well, um, a little bit more before we get too far down the road with the targeting. Can you talk a little bit more about this murder, and can you tell us a little bit about, and you don't have to, but I'm just curious what it was like being in a gang. I mean, I mean it was um, it was like from where I grew up at, it was like normal to me, you know what I mean? So I can't express it no other kind of way because that's all I, you know, knew at that time I was young, and I was, I was born into it and grew up in it, you know, like that. But, um... It was like it was just it was it was bad, you know what I mean? It was bad. Like I said, I'm 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 older now. I'll be forty seven years old this October. And um, uh, you know, I was ten years old when I um, uh, you know, it's a petition first, you know, start gang banging and all that. But at the same time, um, you know, the older people was bad influences on me and um used to um have me doing negative stuff. I didn't know no better because I was still a young kid myself, right? So you know what I mean? I was highly influenced in a negative way. You know what I'm saying? So I was being manipulated. I'm not judging you, you know? at all. You're a kid. But I'm just curious. I still don't really know what it's like to be in a gang. Maybe it's just obviously probably the way I was raised. But does it like stealing? Um, is it 
And again, I'm not. There's no judgment for me. You know me. I'm just very curious what that life is like. Yeah, I mean, it's just like it's probably it's basically. probably very stressful. I bet it's yeah, very stressful. Yeah, yeah, it is. You know what I mean? It's just dealing with you know like you know people just you know what I mean their peers. You know what I mean? Just getting killed and you know what I mean seeing people dying and getting killed in front of you and drive by shootings and you know what I'm saying people and then not only that. They fight against each other, jealousy, and, you know what I'm saying, not getting along with each other. And then, you know, it got so, it's so bad to where they start just killing each other, you know what I mean, all friends killing friends. And uh. they still do, they still doing that right today, killing each other, you know what I mean, um, waiting in the bushes when when, they, when their other friend come home and, sh- and shoot shoot one each other in the back of the heads. That's the kind of stuff they do nowadays. You know what I'm saying? Like people that literally grew up with each other is like literally killing each other like that. Oh, that's terrible. You know what I mean? For real. That's exactly what they're doing. But I'm I'm just saying I didn't know the magnitude of this type of activity for us, like game banging, because if I did, I wouldn't have never um, joined when I was a kid. But like I said, I was only 10 years old. I ain't know no better. You know what I'm saying? Right. Like I'm being influenced by the older ones, you know what I mean, that was like already in their teens and 20s, and I was only yeah. 10 years old. Yeah, so... I grew up in it like that, so that's all I used to, you know what I mean, know basically is that kind of lifestyle. Well, you should be proud of yourself that you, um, that you got out of that life and, and that you did the right thing by, by testifying because yes. I'm sure at the time you, you probably knew what the consequences, uh, even though you didn't know about targeting, to testify in something like that uh, put, puts you at risk. And one of the points I wanted to bring out is that the kind, there's the demographic for targeting is, is across the board. I mean, you're a neuroscientist, Matthew. Um, I was working in um, organizations and doing nonprofit stuff and working with kids, and and then you have people who you know housewives, and you have people from all perspectives. Drug people who were in the drug trade, people that were in the sex trade people that were executives, people that were lawyers. I mean, it's every group of people out there, and that's something I just wanted to point out. It, it, that's what's one of the, the crazy things about this whole thing. Well, let's, uh, let's just, let me just say uh, I don't want to get off topic too much. I want to get back to Kevin's story. But for, for the exact reason that you just mentioned, I personally – do not use um, the term program in the singular. Now, I know what people mean by that. A lot of people mean that it's like, um, it's like a method of crime or a, um, a playbook that's used. Yeah. Um, but that, that, the playbook and the, and the um, technologies seem, or it's, it's, very, it's possible, we need to be open to the possibility, that they're being spread around through marketplaces and cultural transmission, but it's, it's, but it's certainly, uh, it doesn't seem to me to be a single command and control structure, and that's why I personally don't use the word program in the singular, because um, I, I uh, if you have to I, use it, at a, yeah. at a, <laughs> okay. And, and before we get back to Kevin, just let me mention one more thing, and that is I, I mentioned that uh, speculation uh, that I had about um, this group being, you know, somehow above or more powerful than the police. But another possibility that I must acknowledge, and this is just my opinion, is that it's also possible that your location during that period when you were in the, in the safe houses or whatever you, whatever you call them, is that some corrupt police officers were sharing your location. Not, not, not all of them, but the, some were accessing the database and sharing that information. So um, did you have another question, Ella? Uh, no, that's it. I, let's hear, I'd like to hear about a story. And like when you first started yeah. noticing, it sounded like the, the group stalking was kind of one of the initial things. So I'm just going to turn it over to you so you can share everything. Yeah, we, 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 all, we all have that moment. We all seem to have that moment when it, it, it comes crashing down on you that, that there's this targeting and see I want to say program I I'm using it in the other sense this targeting crime so what was that moment uh, where uh, you knew now I'm not talking about you know just the stalking and following because the stalking and following and that and that is part of this crime 
but in the context of being a witness for a court case uh, against, a, against a gang shooting or what looked like some kind of a gang shooting or random act of violence perhaps, but uh, being, being um, terrorized in that context could have fit into the old world view and, and, and that might not have been that moment of, of, of clarity and recognition that there's a targeting crime. So what was that moment like for you when you knew this was at a completely different level, um, something completely out of this world, something um, completely high tech? What was that moment like for you? When they, when like this one, I really knew when, um, they start like stalking me like different people and the kind of people that they had stalking me, they looked at like they was like mafia type of people, you know what I'm saying? And um they wasn't, you know, like um um they was looking like they wanted to be, you know, reckoned with, put it to you like that. And uh they was like following me everywhere I go. I was just starting to be aware of it, how people were just starting to look at me strange. Like, in a, in a, you know what I mean? Like, you know, you could tell when somebody is, like, literally watching you, you know what I'm saying? And, like, looking yeah. at you like they want to kill you or something. Like, you didn't, you know what I mean? Like, right. um, you, they done lost their best friend, you know, stuff like that, right? So, and then, you know what I'm saying? I noticed that. And then I start, um, after that, that was going on, like, for a while. But, I mean, I really didn't, I really wasn't really paying too much attention to it, then it started getting worse because it wasn't that many people when it first started, like, for us stalking me and watching me. You know what I'm saying? And then it started, it progressed it for us. It started to be, like, more and more people. I started seeing, like, people just pass by staring at me, staring at me, you know what I mean, looking at me crazy, you know what I'm saying? And um, and then, like, one after another, then they would just, everywhere I go, right? Then, when, then what they did when they wanted to let me know is what they start doing to all the old people I know from the neighborhood um, start following me, showing sure up wherever I'm at. I can be like, like in a whole other city, like four or five hours out of, away from LA. You know what I'm saying? I can be on the freeway. They'll pull up on the side of me on the freeway, literally. But they won't even look at me. They'll they'll pull right up on the side of me while we on the freeway driving, and um, so so I can see them. Right? I, one day I was on the freeway. Um, I seen about ten people on the freeway that I knew. And I was I was way like probably like four five hours away from L.A. They would just pull up um, like one after another right on the side of me on the freeway doing sixty and seventy miles an hour on the freeway stuff like that. So then that's when I knew. So I'm like I'm trying I was trying to right. figure it out. So um, what put the okay. icing on the cake? What put the icing on the cake was one. So one night I'm at home. It's like three in the morning. I'm watching TV. And then my body, I just started getting electric shocks in my body, and um, it hurt it bad, like awful bad, literally real electric shocks. So I'm jumping all around the living room, all over the house, and you know what I mean? They were just, like, tearing me up, lighting me up, right? I don't know what it is, but I just know my body was getting literally shocked. So I'm going, I'm going all outside and all on the side of the house, looking around and lifting up carpets and opening up all the, you know, doors and whatever, trying to see, I, I'm like, it, this gotta, somebody is doing this with some kind of device, got to be, this ain't normal, right, it was hurting, like, I, mean, I was like literally hollering, it was hurting so bad, so anyway, so I was called, I called Water and Power, and you know what I'm saying, cable company, gas company, I was calling them all out in the middle of the night, 3.34 in the morning, I had them all lined up, all with their flashlights, on, looking all up under the house, I'm like, man, I'm telling y'all, something is uh, shocking, is literally electrocuting me, from a got to be coming from up under the house or something, and um, <clears throat> so I hear um, two police is talking to each other, they standing next to each other, whatever, right? You know, you can hear somebody conversation if you're close enough. And I was reading their lips too. One of them was like saying, God, he um, he crazy than a than a MF. That, that's what one of the cops called the other, like, he crazy, you know what I mean, like that, right? So, anyway, so that was that they didn't find nothing or nothing, right? So, it continued. So I couldn't even go to sleep. Period. They were just electric shocking me all night. So, so that so about eight thirty that morning, a knock on the door. It was social workers, um, mental health uh, social workers, right? That the cops sent. Um, you know what I mean from the incident, from me calling, talking about this. So they're like, yeah, we come to take you to the hospital. You know what I'm saying? And, um, to get you looked out and checked out. You know, or whatever. You know what I mean by the doctor. I'm like, okay. I'm thinking they talking about the medical doctor. You know. So um, so I, I roll with him. I get in the car and go with him. And uh, so I get in the hospital. Uh, 
So when I get there, um, I told the doctor, the medical doctor, what was going on with me. Then I seen a, 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 social, a social worker there, and then uh, they slapped a fifty one fifty hole on me, and um, stuff like that. You know what I mean? They put me in the psych ward. You know what I mean? And I'm like, um, what y'all put me in the psych ward? I'm telling them what's happening to me. They gonna tell me, tell me, I know you just having anxiety and ain't nobody shocking you and this and that kind of uh, crap. You know what I'm saying or whatever. So um, I was in there. I was in there longer than three days. I was in there. They kept me in there for about at least about five or six, something like that. And while I was in there, they had so many people in there just coming in on gurneys, gang members. That wasn't. They didn't even have no mental health problems. You can tell. I was looking at all the people that was in the hospital. It was like some real sick, crazy people in there, literally. You know, talking to themselves and banging their heads against the wall and you know yelling and screaming, hooping and hollering. These people that was coming in there didn't even fit the category. They had gangbangers just lined up, like, all over at each um, wing and each table just stirring at me like, you know what I mean? They were just bringing them on in. They was targeting me in there. The nurses was targeting me in there, talking about me and talking about, yeah, they're going to kill him and this and that and all that stuff. Then I heard some of the nurses talking about, yeah, it was just one African black um, nurse. Um, he was talking about, yeah, they, gotta, we got, they got some stuff, you know what I mean? We can get him one shot. It's untraceable. We can kill him like that. I swear to God, I heard them saying all that stuff to each other. The nurses were talking amongst each other and stuff like that. And uh, so I'm well, trying to get I got to say, uh, I, I just want to jump in real quick. Uh, for, the peop- for the people that are listening in the general public uh, that will listen to this recording, uh, it, it sounds, it, it takes it to a level that is really hard for people to wrap their head around when you talk about um, getting uh essentially you know gas gas lit and persecuted and harassed at that level and uh uh i mean that that would require a serious um a conspiracy in the criminal sense to pull that off but i have to say i will admit when i was targeted up in vancouver canada i i i i'm getting chills right now because they i was also targeted similarly uh now not not in the hospital uh proper but by the paramedics um uh actually they 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 actually got me in their locker room and i was just you know keeping quiet and uh uh several of them uh you know did a did a basically an attack on me with their uh energy weapons in the um in, in their locker room, and that's when I, I just I, I went I went completely quiet. I was just observing, and I was stunned at the. So in other words, um, you know, I'll back you up on this that these harassment networks have grown very large, and they they can pull off things and get into settings um, where uh, it would be shocking. And I know most people in, uh, in the public at this point will have a very hard time accepting that but the day will come when history will will vindicate us that 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 um you know these harassment networks involve a lot of people that can orchestrate things that would horrify people in the general public so it it does sound hard to believe um but uh i have to say a similar thing happened to me um so go go ahead continue yeah, so um so then while I was there, um, so then um I was just hearing uh, people talking and stuff, right? You know what I mean? I was in a in, in a room in my room and I was hearing like people talking, you know what I mean? Like, um and it was the voice the voice I I recognized the voice though. He was you know what I mean, he was just talking about, Yeah, we finna kill you and this and that, we finna give you a heart attack right now and and the moment he said that, um, they just hit my heart. You know what I mean? This is the very first time. And I just hit my heart. It hurt it so bad. I mean, I like literally like fell to the floor. I was just like balled up. I couldn't uh, talk or move or nothing. It was like it then he was like hit hit his heart, hit his heart hard. Then it then um it was just like tightening up. My heart was literally like I can't explain it. Feel like I was having a heart attack. I guess you know what I mean. It hurt it so hard, so bad. So so when they, when they start, um, I got you're talking a little bit fast. I know why because you're feeling anxious and you're kind of reliving it. We slow down just a little bit so we can hear you clearly. Okay, so then when they stopped, um, when they finally stopped, you know what I mean, like, I got up and, like, all the veins in my arms and legs was, like, literally about to pop out, 
you can like literally see my veins. I mean, they was like you can touch them. They was like almost out of the skin of my body, like both of my legs and both of my arms, the veins, almost every vein on my body was like literally about to pop out my skin. So I walked down the hallway to the nurse's station, and I told the nurse what was going on. Like, look at my veins, and this and that. Like, man, my heart is hurt, my chest and all that. So um, he was like, hey, you just having anxiety and this and that. You know, you have an anxiety attack and all that, right? So did, they, the did, they time, acknowledge, uh, did they acknowledge the um, protruding veins, uh, or, or did they dismiss it? He, dis- he dismissed it. And so he said, I'm having an anxiety attack. Keep in mind. This was before I found the community, you know what I mean? It's our community. I, never, I didn't have no knowledge about none of this. I didn't know what was going on, see what I'm saying? So I didn't even tell them, you know what I mean? So I see what they. I see that they was crooked and dirty, though. So, therefore, I didn't know nothing about, the, you know, the weapons and, you know, all that kind of stuff, you know what I mean? That was their first time hitting me with it. From Remember, prior from that night when they were just shocking my body all the night, and then when I get me in the hospital that morning, they was doing something to my heart and made all the veins pop out my body. I was in exclusive pain. So um, okay. So uh, another question, real quick. So this uh, this person voice, this voice that you heard, uh, was it a voice that you recognized? Yeah, same voice I still be hearing right now. Person that I know okay. personally. There's two of them. Okay. Okay. So at that time in the in the hospital, you heard this. Um, was it like uh, you heard it um, coming from a point source in the room? Uh, did, or did it did it seem like it was uh, uh, you know uh, was it hard to localize? Um, did it did it sound different? It sounded, um, it sounded like it was coming from mom in the room. So I'm like looking all up under the bed and like in the okay. little closet and the little bathrooms. I'm thinking they got like you know what I mean, like little hidden microphones and stuff. You know what I'm saying? That's yeah. what I'm thinking, right? So okay. that's what I'm saying because I never knew about none of this, right? It was just happening to me. So I'm looking, searching for everything, looking all up in the little dressers in the, in the room, and I'm all up under the dressers. I'm like, they got, I'm saying to myself, they got to have a little hidden microphone in here somewhere, right? And then, I, then I go, we go outside for a smoke break or whatever, and I'm hearing it outside too. So I'm looking all around, looking all up at the roof, and you know what I mean, and stuff like that. And um, it was like, okay. it, was, it, was, it, was, it was unbelievable, man. And now you, you recognize that now as uh, V2K? Exactly, 100%. Technology. Okay, so let, let's, uh, yep, uh, just to, um, for, for, the per, for the sake of people who may not be aware of this crime, um, V2K, there's, there's, uh, there are different ways of doing it, uh, but um, one of the most talked about ways and one of, the, one of the ways that you do see in the scientific literature there, there is some literature on it, and there's, there's a mechanism, is um, that it's basically um, voice-modulated microwave auditory effect where uh, a, um, a modulated or pulsed microwave beam basically starts to heat up your brain in little pulses, which causes that soft tissue to start vibrating and it basically reproduces a sound um, through those vibrations and um, inside your brain, which then uh, travels uh, to, your, to your inner ear. And, and you, it, is a, it is an actual sound, but it's being produced through the heating and cooling of your brain. Um, and that is a, a well-established uh, microwave auditory effect. Um, yeah, continue. I'd like to hear more about... Uh, all the different modalities of energy weapon harassment that you get. Okay, so that was that. So um, one of um, the crooked nurses that was, you know what I mean, um, you know, um, working with him, matter of fact, he was a charge nurse. And um, he, so when the doctor came, because only initially he supposed to stay three days, right, and then get discharged and go home, and um, this crooked nurse don't tell the um gonna tell the psych, my psych doctor that um I'm paranoid and this and that and um he need to give me a shot and all that stuff, you know what I'm saying? I need to stay longer, he feel I'm not ready to go home. So what the doctor did, he was like, I'm gonna increase your medicine but I wasn't taking none of it. And I was put it under my tongue and uh but the that crooked nurse was trying to get the doctor to give me an injection but the doctor didn't go for it, you know, 'cause he he wasn't no crooked doctor so he didn't he didn't participate in it. 
he said, I'm going to just increase your medicine, you know what I'm saying, or whatever. So, but when they, when they give me the medicine, I just put it on, under my tongue and walk to my room and spit it up, spit it in the toilet and flush it. I never took none of it, never. But anyway, so, um, but the doctor kept me um, a couple more days, you know what I'm saying? So, so I ended up staying about five or six days total, something like that. And then as soon as I got home, it was the same thing. It was the same thing again. As soon as I got home, they was doing the same thing again, you know, um, shocking my body, electric shocking my body. And then they was just talking through the V2K, like, terrible, like, just, it was, like, annoying and making all kind of verbal threats, talking about what they're going to do, which they still do today, you know. And um, it's been, like, almost two years now as far as the um, electronic uh, harassments and stuff. But um, so um, keep in mind, I still didn't know what was exactly going on and, you know, how it just been happening, but I just know somebody is doing it to me, right? So I'm I'm a, I'm scared again, right? It's like they doing it again in the middle of the night. So I got nine one one. Police is coming from everywhere. I'm like somebody outside threatening me and all that. But I don't see them. It was sound like they was like right outside of the house. You know what I mean? So keep in mind, I didn't know nothing about the you know V two K or I ain't even, I ain't even know nothing about the target individual community. None of that. I ain't never talked to nobody about this. So you know what I mean? I was brand new with it. So. Right. Um, uh, we, so we've all had that. Uh, yes. We've all had that. We, I, I, not all of us, but I, I think most of us, if not all of us, have yes. that experience of uh, not knowing about this. And uh, in some ways, when you experience this without knowing about the community, I feel like your observations um, are somehow pure and uh, somehow more, um, more, uh, meaningful, unadultered. unadultered. Yeah. So, uh, I, I really like to, um, hear about what, you know, what it was like before you knew about the community. So let me just clarify something you said, I think you said, uh, correct me if I'm wrong, that you were, that the targeting started 10 years ago, but the energy weapons and the V2K started two years ago. Is that correct? Exactly. September, September, of this year will make uh, uh, even two years. Right. You probably know the day too, because I can I can tell you yeah, my exactly. uh, my energy weapon birthday too. You know, it's almost to the exact hour. You know. So um, okay, Ella, do you have to jump in if you have any questions, Ella? Um, okay. uh, my question is, how did you first find out this had a name, and who did you contact? Okay, okay, I was okay. I was gonna get to that. Yeah, I was on my way to it. Okay, so when I came back from when I got discharged from the um, psych hospital, right? I came back home. Okay, they start the same thing again. You know, shocking, electric shock in my body. Then they start talking through the V two K, all that, right? I was thinking, you know, what I mean, I was like, yeah, we finna kill you, blah, 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 you know, same stuff they do now, right? Only don't bother me now because I already know, you know, they, you know what I mean, what it's about. But I didn't know at the time. But anyway, so. I, I was called 911, right? You know what I mean? Saying somebody outside with a gun, talking about killing me, right? That was before I even knew about even call, you know what I mean, calling the cops about this stuff because I didn't know no better then at that time either. So anyway, so I had about like 50 cop cars, helicopter, everything over here, you know what I'm saying? And all that, you know? And then they'll um, I'd come outside and tell them, they'd be like, they'll search the whole perimeter of the house. I mean, you know, side of the house, the whole street, down the street, and back of the everywhere. They'd be like, we don't see nobody, and blah, blah, blah and all that, right, so then they'll leave, and then as soon as the um, cops leave, they'll do it again to me, start shocking my body again and talking to the V2K, and then I'll dial 911 again. I did that shit, excuse my language, I did that stuff about, I called them about 10 times one night, you know what I mean, the same night I came from the hospital. So what they ended up doing was like, uh, we, we're going to take you on to the hospital, you know what I mean? They took me to the psych hospital again, but not the same one, they took me to a different one. And when I got there this time, some of the people I knew, you know what I mean, the gang members I knew, you know what I mean, they was there waiting on me, all that stuff, and coming in um, on, um, on MLM's gurneys and all that, wasn't nothing even wrong with them, you know what I mean, they was all coming there for me. But anyway, so to make a long story short, I did that for, for months, for several months. It took me months and months. I kept doing that dollar 911 all the time, right? So they kept shocking my body for about three months, right? They kept electric shocking my body. They, don't, they stopped doing electric shock to my body after three months. Then they just started vibrating my body. My whole body, even today, they still just vibrates my body, right? My whole inside nervous system be literally vibrating, like, on a daily basis. You know, it would be so bad I can't even sleep at night. 
I'd be up for two, three days at a time, literally, with no sleep, period. But anyway, so... Can anybody else home. feel your body shaking? I mean, does anybody... No, no. My body, you, you can't even see the... My body, the outside of my body don't shake at all. I just feel a number of vibrations in the inside of my body. Okay, thank right. you. Right. My, 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 uh, my feeling on that, uh, again, it just just my opinion, is that the... Um, they're, they're doing a pulsed, uh, a pulsed radio frequency beam or field, and the pulsation, of course, uh, penetrates your body. It, it, it has high penetrance, and uh, it, it's, uh, it's tuned just so to stimulate your, your muscles, and it can stimulate your smooth muscles in your gut. And um, so it can basically create like um, a a tonic pulsation in your, in your internal uh, muscles and viscera. And, uh, and I, I think that can give the, um, I mean, it's not just a feeling. In a sense, they are vibrating your, your body. Um, that would be, I had similar, uh, similar attacks, and that's just uh, sort of my perspective on that. But uh, uh, go ahead and continue, Kevin. Okay, yeah, so I have to move. Like, even right now, I'm moving around as we speak. You know, I move from one car to the other, and you know what I mean? Then it'll start back up. That's how they do it. But so um, they just kept doing that stuff, you know what I'm saying? I kept calling, you know what I mean, the, the cops and all that, and they kept taking They took me to the psych hospital um, numerous times behind this, right? So then the only thing um, doctors and nurses them all say, oh, you just have an anxiety attack, and you know, that's all in your mind, you know what I mean, that's, that's a bunch of bull, but anyway, so, so then, um, then they start, then, they start making my, um, limbs move, they're like, like, literally make my arm, like, stretch all out and make my legs kick, like, if I'm kicking, like, a ball or something, and then they'll make my, um, the, the, the worstest thing they ever did to me was make my whole entire body jerk, it, it, like, literally feel like someone and just picked you up, lifts you up, and just broke your body in half, that's, that's exactly what it feels like, that's the most awful pain I ever in my life felt. They don't really hardly do that no more. But now what they do too, they'll just make my um, they'll make my neck turn and my head turn. Like when I lay down and get ready to try to go to sleep, they'll just literally move, make my whole entire head like turn to the left or turn to the right on his arm. You know what I mean? Like they got full, like if I'm some kind of puppet or something, like they just got total full control of my body. That's what I be going through on, on a regular daily basis. Every now and then, you know what I mean, they give me a break for like a day or two, you know what I mean, but it's rare. But other than that, they do it all every day to me and every night. And I, especially at nighttime, I fear hates when it get dark. That's the worstest time at nighttime when it get dark. I hate when it get dark. So anyway, I kept doing that over and over for, for about, about six months, calling the police and this and that. And, to, and the doctors kept telling me the same crap to me, you having this ID and you know what I mean, I ain't nobody doing this to you and that's impossible and all that. I'm, I'm like, I'm, I'm not stupid, so I'm like, I start Googling stuff. I, I got on my own cell phone and start Googling what makes your body vibrate, you know what I mean, what makes your body jerk, all that kind of stuff. That's what I start doing on my own, right? And then I start seeing, um, you know what I mean, um, I'm like old school, I don't even listen to rap, right? I'm like listening to like oldies but goodies and, you know, music from like the 60s and 70s and 50s. So, but I kept seeing T.R. pop up, right? When I Google uh, what makes your body do this and do that, I kept passing it by, strolling down, a, you know, um, through the Internet, but I never clicked on it because I was thinking it was the rapper that named T.I. I was thinking it was like rap videos or something, so I never clicked on it. So, But every time I started to kept Googling that, right, what makes your body do this, um, um, you know, vibrates and what makes your body, um, you know, um, jerk and all that stuff, I see T.I. or whatever, but I, like I said, keep in mind, I was thinking it was the rapper, you know, because they be having the rap videos on there, you know, the rapper named T.I., that's what I was thinking it was, so I just, I have never paid it no attention, so one day I said I got tired of it popping up, and I clicked on it, and it was Derek Robertson them on the news with the um, T.I.s in Southern California, out there in Palm Springs, California, and they had, and, 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 and I was watching it, and everything that was talking about fit me to the T, 100%. So and then they had a contact and they had a contact number on there, right? On you know, on the news or whatever and I and I called and I talked to him and I talked to him. It took him a few days, I left him a message and he called back and I talked to him, then he um explained to me all the um 
I told him everything that's going on to me, like I'm just telling you guys, and he explained to me all my symptoms, exactly what the name of this is, what the name of that is, and that's how I found the community, just like that. And then he gave me the number. He's like, we got conference calls with um, other people. You, you, he's like, you're a target individual. And I was like, what is that? And he explained it to me. And um, he was like, we got conference calls uh, with other people that's just like you, going through the same exact thing like you. He's like, I even had one. So he's like, get a pen. I wrote all the numbers down. And he gave me his number. He gave me Ella number, you know what I'm saying, and, and Frank number, everybody number. And um, I've been in the TI community ever since. You know what I'm saying? So that's yeah. how I found the community on my own. For looking up, okay. trying to find out what's wrong with my body, because I know damn well somebody is doing this to my body. I ain't having no damn anxiety attack. Of course, of course. We, we. Um, I mean, when you when you're attacked by these types of weapons, uh, even sometimes with the thin beam weapons, you can even uh, feel uh, which direction it, it's coming from. Now you can't always do that, but I mean, um, and, and sometimes it leaves. Um, bruising uh, on your body. So, you know, um, just, just for those listening, um, it's, 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 very, it, it's, it's not anxiety. It's, uh, it, there are traces that are left by this, and it's, it's like no, you know, we've all, we've all experienced anxiety prior to targeting, and this, this is something completely outside the realm of our normal, you know, mood and um, mental health. You know, we all have variability in our mental health and this this is this is like a sledgehammer getting hit by a sledgehammer but um anyway um about the community uh, i'd like to get your perspective on um you know obviously uh knowing that there's other people going through this is very supportive for all of us but what are the pros and cons um has has uh being in touch with the community been been all positive or uh, what are the pros and cons of that, and do you have any any um, recommendations for how the community might uh, might uh, improve the way um, it's it's trying to do, you know, exposing these crimes and and support for people? So, what, basically, what's your impression of the community? I mean, um, it's a, um, I love I love the TR community. It's a nice group group of people, but. Um, you know, like, it's, like, hard because we just not sticking together like we should, you know what I mean? So that would be giving, um, you know what I mean, the perps and, you know what I mean, the people that's doing this more power because they keep us, like, really isolated. I mean, we say we together and coming together and doing things together, but at the same time, at the end of the day, we really is, like, kind of separated. We, we, we be together on a cause or whatever and talking or whatever, but we need to actually, um, you know what I mean, like, like start sticking together and being together all the time. You know what I'm saying? That's that's my suggestion and my um belief about it. You know what I'm saying? Because right. um like I got an opportunity to get my um situation and case case investigated and I'm gonna need, you know what I mean, some uh, some of my peers in the T R community, you know what I mean, to um come with me and everything, you know, at the same time. You know what I mean? So and absolutely so three, uh, three different things on what's what's happening to me, what's going on and, and about just the whole targeted individual stuff in general. You know what I'm saying? But I mean I feel I feel uh, we make we're making a lot of progress. I feel at the end if we start really sticking together and stop um really um you know, fighting amongst each other and stuff and um arguing with each other all the time and accusing each other and stuff all the time. Yeah, I agree. And you also allude to uh, sticking together in a more um, in a more physical and uh, you know uh, real world sense, not just on the calls, but really when you're most vulnerable to this crime is when you're is when you're alone, and so um, it, it would be nice to have uh, supporters that you know that imagine uh, imagine living somewhere where you knew that the neighbors to the left and right of you. Uh, knew about this crime, were aware of the crime, and were uh, t- possibly uh, TIs themselves. I mean, you could you could look out for each other. That would um, that would certainly help. And I think we're we're doing the rallies. People are coming together. There's some support groups forming. So it is heading in that direction. But uh, let's let's take a little turn here because I know you have people will be very interested in this. You've had you've been on an exodus around the country trying to find a, a community or a place to get away from this. 
and that gives us insights into the scale of this. And uh, you know, uh, it seems like you basically, um, in my in my view, and maybe correct me if I'm wrong, but you've sort of come to the to the edges sometimes. You've 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 sort of had uh, time periods when you were able to sort of get into a, a much lower targeting situation. So tell us about that um, effort of yours to get away from this and did you ever have places and times when you felt like you, bro you broke free of the targeting? Um, yes, um, absolutely. And it was recently too. Um, I had like got big relief, you know, when I was in um, Iowa. You know, it was a period of time when I got big relief. But the whole time when I was targeted, when I was out there, you know what I mean, it was like lightweight compared to California. You know what I'm saying? It was like something I can like literally deal with and, 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 and handle it wasn't like, it wasn't nothing, you know what I mean, compared to that, you know what I'm saying, compared to where I'm at in California. And um, so it does make a difference, I believe, in like your location and environment too, to a certain extent. I mean, I'm speaking, you know, through experience, you know what I'm saying, but it was like, you know what I mean, it, it just felt good to like, you know what I mean, um, go a few weeks, almost a month maybe, without even, um, you know what I mean, getting, like, brutally tortured or whatever. But one thing I do know for a fact that V2K, though, never hardly leave is, though, it, I was getting it out there, too, but it was, like, it wasn't as strong. I couldn't hear them as loud and clear as I do when I'm in um, California, where it initially started on me at anyway, my target in general. I noticed that, too, like, when I'm on the freeways or whatever and just traveling, I don't, I don't hardly hear nothing. You know what I'm saying? I won't be getting hit. My uh, the way they do me, they they give me big time. Hit me the most is when I'm in a house. But like when I'm out, you know what I'm saying? Like just out in general, out out of out of a house in a location period, just traveling or going somewhere, just out. I don't feel nothing. No kind of weapons or nothing. Period. I don't feel nothing. No vibrations. I don't get hit. Right. I don't feel nothing. Only they just get me like when I'm in a house. They just be. Um, like Brody torturing me like like horrifically like I mean I'll be crying sometimes if you hurt so bad. Yeah. Yeah. Well, that, according to many uh, people's view, uh, the house is the most um, you're most vulnerable in your home. Uh, I'm, I'm not I'm not claiming that this is you know the absolute truth. I'm I'm just saying that I've heard from many people and I happen to share this view that your house is the most dangerous. Uh, place once you become targeted because the, um, the equipment is set up and, um, you know, as long as you're in your bed, you know, they, they, have, the, they have their equipment set up in, in, uh, in and around your house. And if you, uh, if you break um, from the perimeter of your house, especially unexpectedly or travel, then, um, then they need to put the word out and basically redeploy. So um, that people who are targeted and alone and just stay in their house um, and some have no, some have no choice, some have no options, but that seems to be a highly vulnerable place, which is what makes this crime so despicable and disgusting because, you know, we, in, in our American view and not even American view, but just in our uh, humanity kind of regards the house as a, as a sacred place. Because, you know, it can be rough out on the streets. You can have a rough time at, 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 uh, at your job and whatnot. But when you're in your house, um, this, this crime can, can intrude upon your, your domicile in a way that is very sinister. And once the general public uh, really gets to know, uh, knows what's going on, um, the pendulum is going to swing back hard because... Uh, no one wants to have a crime that can be so invasive in, into your house like that. So um, thanks for sharing that. That's really interesting. Now, I have another question for you, um, and I'll, I'll ask it like a, a medical scientist, which, which I am. Uh, it sounds like for two years, based on your, on your um, recounting of your experiences, for two years you had very high exposure I'll call it exposure. That would be the term that they would use um, from a medical pr perspective. You had very high exposure to these energies, um, wh whatever they, they are, microwave energy or whatnot. And um, 
I'm wondering if you feel like during periods when you're not targeted now, do you have any deficits like neurological deficits, hearing problems, balance problems, problems like the diplomats in Cuba, the American diplomats and Canadian diplomats in Cuba, and the American diplomats and other um, foreign service workers in China. Do you, do you feel like um, your, your health has been permanently adversely affected in any, any ways? Um, no, I don't. Actually, I don't. But I know, for, I know that a couple of times um, since I've been targeting and getting hit with these weapons, they hit me so hard one time, and, um, like, I couldn't even hardly walk. I was, like, walk, trying to walk to the stream door. I was right in front of the house on the porch, and I was trying to walk to the stream door, and I was walking sideways. Literally, I'm thinking I'm walking straight, but I was, like, walking sideways. I couldn't walk straight. I was walking sideways. I was about to fall, lose, and balance. You know what I mean? Um, I can't even explain the feeling. I don't, know what, I don't know what they did, but they hit me with something so hard, like, until I couldn't even hardly walk. I barely made it. Um, I had to grab onto the bar of the door, you know what I mean, and just hold on the the key from falling and um, right yeah but I mean I think you're doing I think you're doing a great job I think you're doing a great job explaining it by the way it it is hard to explain Um, it that um, that could have been um, something that was affecting your uh, your balance uh, because because if your if your sense uh, your sense of position in space proprioception and balance if there's if they're affected your body will naturally try to compensate for it, and so you, you might uh, be walking in a strange way because those um, energy weapons are affecting your, um, your sense of your position in space, and your body's trying to compensate for it. But uh, anyway, anyway, go ahead. Yeah, but I mean, besides, um, that happened to me like twice, you know what I'm saying, but about two or three times since I've been getting you know, hit with the weapon as far as, like, um, can't, couldn't hardly walk and was about to, like, like pass out and fall and walking crooked and sideways, couldn't even walk straight. That don't happen, um, like, just um, normally it don't just happen, you know what I'm saying, without them doing it to me, like, you know what I mean, it don't just happen frequently or whatever, but it has happened to me, like I say, about three times before. And another thing, wow. too, I've been hearing, I've been hearing like a generator like running. You know what I mean? Then sometimes I hear different. Sometimes be sound like an air compressor running. It be making noise like this, coming from outside somewhere like this, like that. And I ask my brother and my sisters and them. You know what I mean? I have them to come outside. Be like, y'all hear that? They don't hear shit. I'm the only one can hear it though. And then sometimes I, I mean, then most nights, almost every night, it sounds like I hear some kind of machine running, like a generator, like a motor or something. And um, like at nighttime, like all night in the middle of the night, and then I, I go outside and stick my head, like go on the porch and listen. It'd be like coming from somewhere in the area, but I can't pinpoint exactly where it's coming from. But I'm the only one can hear it. Can't nobody else hear it but me. Yeah, that's, that's I, I mean, that that. That's consistent with uh, a lot of other reports. Uh, now, uh, um, I feel like uh, I feel um, a lot of us feel that we're making progress. That um, the circle of people that are aware of, of, of these allegations, at least, and and uh, some of them be- believe the allegations, is growing larger and larger. And I, I know you have uh, talked to people in your social circle. And about this, and with mixed success, um, it, do you think we're on the right track? Do you, do you do you talk about this with people? I know when you you, you probably learned your lesson about um, calling nine one one and and uh, interacting with the police because uh, that uh, lands you in the in the psych ward. So you, I'm sure you learned your lesson there. But what about uh, speaking to people in your social circle? Have you um, had any success? Uh, convincing people that, that this kind of crime is going on? Yes. Um, I talked to a couple of people, you know, and uh, and um, one was like, he believed me too. And then uh, another one said he'd been hearing about, you know what I'm saying, this kind of stuff. And he said um, this stuff is um, actually true and actually real. And he said, um, 
And then um, not only that, um, I have a, a cousin that's in prison, that's been in prison for about 20-something years, and um, he had his friend to call uh, Collect one time and um, for him because he couldn't use the phone, so he had his friend up in there to call for him. So I was talking to him and stuff like that. I was telling him, I was giving him a message to get to my cousin about what they're doing to me and who doing it to me and stuff like that. And I don't even know this, didn't even know this guy, right? I swear. This guy was like, yeah, man, I heard about that, man. Uh, I've been reading all up about that stuff on the Internet and everything, you know what I mean, uh, targeting people, who've been getting tar- innocent people who just been getting targeted and stuff. And he, uh, so a lot of people was, um, is starting to know and, and is, is aware, becoming aware of this. The word is like literally getting out, for sure. Yeah, I'm encouraged then, about that, too. It, yeah, then I'll explain to him what kind of stuff they do and tactics and all that. And he'd been hearing about it, and I didn't even He said, because uh, he was just in there for a pr- probation violation or something, and he said he was um, re- he, he was new about that when he was out, when he was at home. He said he was reading about it and was hearing about uh, targeted individuals and stuff like that. So, um, yeah, it's getting out. Yep, that's encouraging. I, I, I really feel it is, too. I have actually told um, half of the people in the office I work in, uh, and um, I've had no problem. Uh, uh, at least, I mean, they're not concerned about my mental health. Um, I, I, I can't really tell for sure to what level they believe me, but um, a lot, some of the people I've talked to, and this is a, you know, this is a government office, at, you know, have, have um, asked for more information. You know, so, um, and I'm, I'm there, you know, at the office, uh, telling them in the office uh, and, and, and not holding back either. So I, I am encouraged, too, that um, we're approaching the critical mass when uh, it'll just be too, too much out there to, for people to, uh, to, to deny what's going on. But then, of course, um, you know, people can listen to you, but then knowing what to do to help you and knowing how to stop this crime is, is a whole other thing, but it, but the first step is getting the word out. Uh, Ella, did you have any more questions? No, you've done a great job asking questions and commenting, so I'm good. Yeah, Kevin, I really appreciate you sharing. Did you have any other? Um, you know, you know your story better than we do. Are there any other uh, details that you wanted to share? And yes. um, after that, are you are you willing to answer questions from the other um, callers? Yeah, sure, no problem. Um, no, I mean that that's that that about sums it up right there. I mean, I'm willing to ask the questions if um anyone have any that they would like to um ask. But I have for the most question. part for, for the most part all the, um all my friends in the TI community know me, so that's a good thing. What helps you get through a day? That's what I wanted to ask you. Talking to other TIs. And yep. in a in, in a okay. conference calls, I mean, because I was lost without that. You know what I'm saying? I thought, I, I man, I was literally lost without that. I mean, because first of all, I don't have no friends, not one. I mean, I have friends now, all my TI friends in the TI community. But outside of that, I didn't have no friends. Period. Before I found the TI community, not one friend. Keep in mind, all my friends, ex friends, they all you know, gang members and bad people, and then the people who was doing this to me too. Period. So. I don't have no friends, period. And not only that, you know, they been did the smear campaign and, you know, did this, did that. One more thing I would like to add that I was intending to say earlier in the conversation was uh, what you were saying, though, earlier about the question. Um, yeah, like when I was going to court, they was um, coming all up to the courthouse, too. The gangbangers, they was coming to the court, coming in the, trying to come in the courtroom and everything. And, um, and, um, and the police and stuff, you know what I'm saying, was kicking them out of court and making them leave and all that. Mm-hmm. Wow. Okay. Wow. Yeah. Well, uh, Ke- uh, Kevin, uh, before you um, take some questions, I just wanted to say it was it was great meeting you in person at the Sacramento rally, and uh, thank you for sharing your um, your story, your experiences, and uh, you know I, it's very informative to hear your perspectives, and. I hope to meet you again at, at another rally, and uh, I, I'm definitely going to uh, expect to see you at our at our victory party when we get this thing exposed. You know, so um, we'll like stay that. in touch. Okay, All right. Thank you. I appreciate it. Thank, thank you. Thanks. So you're we're going to open.
for now. And now, Matthew, I know you do need to go, so I just want to say thank you so much for co-hosting, and I'll talk to you tomorrow. Okay, I'll be here. I just have to get up at 4 a.m., so I'll, I'll be winding down, but I'll be, I'll be listening to the rest of the call. Thanks a lot. Thanks again, Kevin. Okay, so now I'm going to go to Anonymous. They've been there a while, so they may not actually be there when it's time to get to them. Let's see. Hi, Anonymous. Do you have a question for Kevin? Hi, um, Ella. It's Sharon in New Jersey. Well, hi, um, Sharon. Hi, hi. I am so, so, so blessed to hear Kevin's story. Um, Kevin, thank you for your sharing with us because everything you're experiencing is the same thing that I'm experiencing. Uh, um, many of us on the, on the, on the call um, can relate to the things that you said tonight. So I appreciate what you said. So um, do you know exactly who put you in the program, um, Kevin? I might have missed that. Who did you say put you in this program? Yes, I mean, I got, yeah, I, I know um, most likely, um, I don't even like using them terms, handlers or whatever, you know what I mean? But the per- I know that it's the person that 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 been orchestrating and the stalking and the talking and all that stuff, you know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, I know him personally. Like I said, these guys, I know him. You know what I mean personally. So um, yeah, you could say yeah. I know. I know exactly who they are and who got me in this program. Yeah. So so you Karen, think he had gone to court and testified in a murder case, and I think that's how this all started. Uh huh. Uh huh. So I guess I'm just trying to understand. What, was it the the gang members, the bad guys, or? The authority, who 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 exactly put him in this program? I guess that's what I'm trying to. All right, okay. Yeah, like I like I said, yeah, mine is basically mine is just like a revenge. You know what I mean? They got me in this, you know, some kind of revenge thing. Basically, that's it. You know, I mean, mm. in my in my situation, that's all mine is about. Yeah. Okay. Yeah, mines yeah. ain't mines don't have nothing to do with like you know like law enforcement agencies and stuff like that. You know. So the mods is like kind of probably like, you know, different in, you know, so many ways as a lot of different, you know, it's all, a lot of us have different, you know, things that happens or whatever. But mods, yeah, it's through these um, people that I know. Okay. Okay. Uh, okay. Okay. Um, Ella, I, yeah. I, I'm still trying to connect with the people in New Jersey. I have not heard from anyone. I um, wanted to connect with them so we could try to do something for the um, rally in August, but I've not heard from anybody. I sent email, and so I don't know. <laughs> I'm, I'm beginning to wonder, if uh, do we have yeah. any TIs in New Jersey? New Jersey has always been a tough place. I don't know why. It just really yeah. seems like it's hard to get people together there. I don't know. Mm. You know, it just seems to be something I've noticed over the past several years I've been here. Um, mm. So anybody listening on YouTube, if you're from New Jersey and you want to connect, you can yes. go to surveillancesurvivors.org uh, and, and uh, fill out the Connect Me page. You too, Sharon, if you want to go there, she might have somebody in New Jersey. And what happens, she'll send an email to all the people she has that mm-hmm. have wanted to connect. But if you're online and you're listening to this, uh, go ahead and send me an email to fftiorg at gmail, and just in the caption or the title, just put New Jersey, and just give me some information. I'll pass it on to Sharon. Okay. Appreciate it, Ella. You're welcome. Okay. Thank you. Hey. Thank you, Kevin. Hey, Ella, I have a follow-up question if I'm, if I'm still unmuted. You're still unmuted. Okay. Uh, just uh, that, that uh, last uh, – that caller – uh, first of all, anyone in the New Jersey area, uh, it would be great if we could get a rally going in New Jersey. But uh, right. don't forget that the um, New York City rally is, is going to happen, and so if you're close to New York City, you could, you could go there and support that one too. You have that option also. Okay, okay. Okay, and for Thank Kevin, you. uh, I, I, you're welcome. Uh, Kevin, I, that um, reminded me, that caller's question reminded me, that I did have another question. I, I'm really fascinated by your story because in my case, uh, I was targeted uh, for, for similar uh, reasons by what seemed like a, 
an organized crime group, although it was like a white collar organized crime group. But so I'm, I'm curious about your perspective on, do you have any thoughts on how the gang members that are um, doing revenge, of, uh, carrying out revenge of revenge uh, harassment and persecution on you, how they are uh, maybe acquiring this uh, equipment? Uh, do you have any ideas about that? No, not at all, but um, I know one thing, um, they're going to have money, for sure, a lot of money, and for um, two, um, that's not like, to me, that's not abnormal for like, you know what I mean, street kind of people and gangbangers to do this kind of stuff, like this cowardly stuff, like torturing people like this in this kind of way, you know what I mean, that's why I don't even understand, like, um, how is these group of guys, like, doing this, so... But it all, it's all going to come out, you know what I mean? That's for sure. And I'm, I'm going to make sure of it, and I'm going to find out for sure, too. You know what I mean? Yeah, and, yeah. Um, one, and they, they need to one be in jail le- for the rest of their life. That's what I do know. Oh, I agree. I agree because the, uh, the crime that they're doing to you is on, uh, done repeated on a daily basis. Um, and uh, I am uh, – I think one thing this whole uh, targeting crime teaches us and, and if you look back in history, it's not a new lesson, but when people can get away with things with impunity, with no repercussions, mm-hmm. um, secretly, it, uh, there is a, you know, a fairly sizable fraction of people that will do hideous things to other people. And when, when, um, when the police expect us to try to explain that as if somehow no, nobody would do this. This crime doesn't make any sense. Well, the history of the world shows us that um, there's all kinds of crimes throughout the ages that don't make sense to normal people, and it shouldn't be up to us to explain the motive because people will do really sick, sen- senseless things when they can get away with it. Some people, you know, not, not all, but a, a good number um, – so anyway, um, I'm, I'm intrigued by the possibility. I, I haven't looked myself. I, I don't go on the dark web, but I'm intrigued about the possibility that there are uh, marketplaces on the dark web for this uh, equipment. Um, you know, I, I know that there are actual uh, markets that have been taken down where you can get drugs, weapons, um, you know, even I saw a news report that you could buy um, right. uranium uh, on, on, on these kinds of uh, Silk Road type uh, marketplaces. So I'm, I'm really intrigued um, about the possibility that there might be a marketplace on the dark web. And, and mm-hmm. as you said, I would agree that uh, it's, uh, the equipment's not going to be cheap. But um, anyway, uh, that's all. Thanks for answering my question. Oh, look, I'd like to um, ask something to that. You just made me think. Um, another, my opinion about this whole targeted stuff as well. Um, first of all, if you guys just really think about it, these weapons or whatever, it's like the whole system, you know what I mean? The hospitals and, um, you know, the hospitals play the, the most important, biggest part of it, I believe. Because think about it, you can't just get down with these weapons and just see anybody just walking down the street and, and, and pull the trigger or whatever or the computer, whatever they do with it, whatever, however they do it. And this person I don't feel it, it won't do shit to them. They won't feel nothing. You know what I mean? That's what I'm saying. It got to be somebody. All, my opinion about this whole thing is all those targeted individuals is somebody that, that's a, that was a friend to us or our family members that's got us, helped the people get us in this shit. You know what I mean? Straight up. Ain't no ifs, ands, buts about it. You know what I mean? For us, like our whereabouts, our, our, you know what I mean? All our movements and this and that, what we do, how we do it. You know what I mean? That that got these people on us like this. Somebody helped them get all the, all this on us. Period. You know what I mean? Because you cannot just walk down the street with no kind of energy weapon, whatever, all that stuff, whatever, or the supercomputer, whatever, and just hit anybody just walking by. It don't work like that. So I want you guys to um, take that in consideration. What I'm saying. It's somebody that, yeah. you know what I mean, a dear friend that we had or st- or had or whatever or a family member that helped get us connected to this crap, man. It's only, yeah, it's only right obvious now. if you guys just really think about it. Like if any one of us had a direct energy weapon right now, somebody walking down the street, a stranger, anybody, you can't um, press a button and make this person feel that. It don't even work like that. You know what I mean? Somebody got us that was real good, got us connected, 
into this stuff, man, with these people. They saw yeah, this right. straight up. Yeah, I agree with that, Kevin, because I think I was put into this program by my ex-father-in-law. Okay, 602, you're next. Hi, 602. Hi. <clears throat> I'm sorry. It, it's okay. it's my turn? It's your turn. Oh, my God. I just, um, my name is Constance. Well, hi, uh, Constance. Welcome to the call. Hi, I uh, was listening to everything he was saying, and it reminds me a lot. Oh, my God, I can't believe this. Um, Of everything that I went through, I am totally blind. I see nothing but black in front of my eyes. I have been going through this since 2012. I am raising a daughter with cerebral palsy. She doesn't talk and she doesn't walk. Okay. And um, when w- this started affecting us, we were living in a house, and um, I think I called the police about two to three hundred times. Um, we, I never went to the psych ward, but I got so many um, police reports because um, I didn't understand what was going on. I just knew that my daughter was seeing people in our house, and I were hearing them. I uh, realized there was stuff falling on my head. There was so much that I didn't know. I was getting pains in my arms and everything that was going on, and I I didn't know. Um, We moved to a different state, and like he said, it happened it happened again, and we moved again, and it happened worse, and now we're living in an apartment, and it's happening worse than anything ever. But, yes, the police reports were one of my big things, and um, it's very hard because our stalkers are mostly children, all of our neighbors, and they come into our house. And they walk around. I hear them. My daughter sits in a corner now and watches them, and there's nothing we can do. Um, but I guess what state are you in? Will you somehow, I know you're blind, but it would be great if I could connect you with people in your area that they can come check in on you, other people going through things like this. I'm in Arizona. Phoenix. Arizona, there's a lot of people in Arizona. They're not Phoenix, the most I would love to meet them. Oh, well... Um, is there a way that, you know what, I see some, okay, I, if you want, I can call you tomorrow because I have um, the information on the board here, and we'll try and get you paired up with some people from Arizona. You but like I said, they're not the most coming out of my eyes. group, but, you know, there's a lot of people in Arizona, so there's got I to be I would love to talk to them. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank you, ma'am. Kevin, are you still there? Uh-oh. Yes, I'm here. I'm oh, here. you are there. Okay, great. Okay. Well, thank you for that, ma'am. Okay. Um, and I will call you tomorrow, and we're going to try and get you squared away, squared away with some uh, women maybe there in Arizona. I just tomorrow, I don't want to. I don't want you to tell me online, but I'll find out where you are exactly in Arizona because I know like a handful of really wonderful women that would be there for you. Thank so, um, you so I much. I will see you tomorrow, hon. Bye. Okay. Bye. Okay, John, you're next. Hi, John. Hello. Hi. Hi. Yeah, um, I was just listening to the, uh, to the, um, to the podcast or whatever, the conference call. I'm sorry? I noticed. Yeah. I was listening to the conference call, and it started, like, because I doubt the things that happened to me, like, the person who targeted me, I doubt it's the person who I think it is, right? You think what? Because sometimes these people don't know, for sure. Yeah, because uh, there's a lot of things that have happened in my life, and I'm just I'm doubting the people who, who uh, I think targeted me, who I thought about in the first place. Well, you're in, a, you're in a place where you can at least learn and you can connect with others. All right, so, uh, yeah, I've been in, I've been a target since I was, uh, 
very young, 17. I that's, I'm sorry to hear that. That's very young. And I'm like, I'm about 30 now, so. I'm dealing with this a long so, time. Yeah, I just want to say thanks for uh, reinstilling my beliefs and who started targeting me. Right, so thanks for that. Okay. Okay. Oh, yeah, I'm not like, yeah, I'm not really a gangbanger, but like, uh, yeah, that that helped me. Uh, like, uh, gonna help me. Uh, that helped me a little bit. Okay. I'm glad it could. I don't know if I need to make peace with them or what, but like. Just somebody who said I did something to them when I was younger, and like I've I sent an apology note. I didn't think that I did anything to them. It was actually it was I'll just tell you about it. it. Was this girl, and we had a normal relationship. And I was a minor, and she was a minor. We ended up having sex with each other, but um, we're like a year apart. And uh, her parents just started saying that I raped her and I didn't rape her. But the police didn't do anything because we've been having a relationship for so long. You know, they probably thought, like, oh, it's being framed or something. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So I don't know if I need to remake peace because I don't even live in the same neighborhood. Yeah, you never know that Aren't you over to somebody, to a group, an entity, to yeah. DP, to whatever? You just don't know who yeah. they know. Yeah, I know, like, their family. Their it's, family best was, party, it's best to probably just stay away from them and leave them people alone. Yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, you're probably right. Like, I know their family was, the girl told me their family was in the mafia a little bit. And, uh, it's definitely that, mafia involvement. I've talked to someone from the mafia who was involved with this, yeah. Yeah, they said, like, uh, I know, like, it was a Russian person. And, uh, like, I know they're fighting back and forth with Ukraine now, but a lot of people here where I live, like, I've also heard another person say, I think it's the Russians, and another person say, I think it's the Russians, over and over again. Well, these are American people stalking people, so mm, hard to say. Yeah, I live in Canada. It's kind of multicultural, more around in Canada, so. That's hard to say. But, um, okay, John, well, I'm going to go to the next go question. We have a little question. bit of a list here, and I have 20 minutes left to go, so I'm glad um, he was able to. Yeah, uh, all right, so thank you. I'm going to I'm gonna just mind my business. Like, I'm going to probably just talk to the TIs and try and, help them with all their difficulties so one day we could, I don't know, protest or something. Nice. Like I heard you, you guys have protests and stuff, yeah. And there's people in Canada, there's uh, in Ontario, BC, they are able to, um, they actually are having a support group meeting, so if that's something you're interested in, just let me know. All right, because, yeah, I heard it's going on on multiple different levels, like, this government, this corporation, and everything. So, yeah, so, all right. So, thank you for taking my call. No problem. Thanks, John. Okay, 832, uh-huh. you're next. Hi, 832. Hey, Ella. Uh, this is my second time calling in. Uh, and, uh, Kevin, your story, uh, uh, it sounds a lot like mine, except uh, I'm not a witness on a murder trial. Uh, 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 I had, there's a... Uh, there's like some dope dealers in the neighborhood. I don't want to get too specific because uh, uh, where I stay in Texas, it's, uh, uh, our house is all on blocks, and they like to stay under the house and beam me with uh, whatever direct energy weapon causes uh, tons of heat. And, uh, you know, at the moment, it's, it's I and my five-year-old son being targeted, and, you know, I can take uh, a lot of pain. I've been paraplegic since 2013, and I've, I've ran a gambit of, you know, different pain, and uh, it's just, it bothers me when my, when when they burn my son, so I don't, it, then I know that 
one of them is under there right now. And, you know, I don't want to talk too much while, while uh, somehow they're listening. Uh, but, uh, yeah, your story did help me. And uh, I was wondering if, uh, I don't know if uh, Dr. Aaron is uh, still on, on the line or not. No, he's just uh, listening. He has to get it before I am, so. Oh, yeah, I understand that. Um, yeah, whatever it is, it's called just heat, like a lot of heat. And, uh, you know, it'll wake me up 2, 3, 4 in the morning, and uh, I get hotels locally, or uh, I've even traveled to uh, my sister's house, which is uh, probably about 30 miles away, and spent the night there. Uh, I didn't. I did not get much rest that night either. I think I got about four, four hours of sleep before I had to uh, get up and book out of there. And like I said, I'm paraplegic, so it takes me it takes me a good you know while to load my wheelchair in. I have to disassemble it and load it up in the passenger side and whatnot. Um, but uh, I, I'm you know I'm. I'm uh, I'm trying to to open my family's eyes to this, uh, and uh, I'm I'm going to play this this particular podcast uh, for my family, and um, uh, hopefully, you know. Uh, and also, uh, Ella, I was going to see if uh, you could maybe connect me with some people locally. I talked to uh, I believe it was Sheila a few yeah. days ago, Sheila. Yeah, I talked to her a few days ago, and she gave me a list uh, of four people here locally. But uh, it, it was uh, I wrote it on a piece of paper, and uh, you know I was I was in the middle of trying to pack up some stuff to go to the hotel and escape it. But it seems like it was just worse at the hotel. There's a local hotel where it seems like that is like headquarters locally for. Uh, for the uh, stalkers around here. Mm-hmm. Um, okay, but, well, uh, you know my email, and you know our uh, hotline number. I know that. So just give me a call, and we'll try to get you situated with some people. Okay. Uh, um, yeah, yeah. Um, okay, well, then I'll I'll, uh, I'll email you right after this, and uh, I'll see if you can't uh, send me, like, a list of uh, I'm going to be at a cell phone through. reception for two days, guys, um, but I'll still do my best to get back to people. I will drive into town um, to make calls. Um, I'm going to go out and be in nature away from all this. I'm going to go camping. So Saturday and Sunday I'm <laughs> not going to be available. Um, any any excuse to get out of the house and be in nature, I'm there. I'll tell you that much. And it's yeah. cheap. Oh, <laughs> I can't think. Okay, so I'm going to go to the next person, and hopefully I'll be able to get back to you tomorrow. Okay, um, thank you, and, th- and uh, thank you, Kevin, for your story because uh, it also sounded a lot like, uh, like, you know. All right, look, um, once you go, you can take my number down and call me, brother. You can talk to me. You know what I'm saying? Okay, let me uh, let me put it in my. Well, I mean, um, let me see. Hold on, my hold on, my guy. Okay, I'm here. You ready? Yeah. Area code. Okay. All right, Kevin, thank you. I appreciate your story, man. All right, you're welcome, man. Thank you. I appreciate it, too. Okay. Okay. Thank you, Ella. Thank you. Okay, so I'm going to go to Gia. Oh, Gia. Hi, Missy. Hello, hello. Hi. Hi, hon. How are you? You're so cute. I love you. Your guest, is he still here? Yes, he's here. Okay. I want him to know that I used to hear that that noise that he was speaking of in the sky. I used to call it the wind machine. Uh, yeah. Okay. So when I heard you say it, I, I mean, I, I couldn't believe it because just today... I was whipping around my cord of my earbud, my headphones from my cell phone, you know, and I was flipping the cord around in circles. I don't know what I was doing it just today. And I, and I go, Oh my gosh, that sounds like that wind machine I used to hear. (laughs) 
And wow. it, it is not necessarily a helicopter. It could be maybe a drone of some sort, but it sounds really big, and it covers the what? whole... Yeah, the and whole you don't see energy. anything. Mm-hmm. What, I, what I believe it is, I think um, they be having, like, big old, like, the perps. I think they be, like, you know, they be got to be close in the vicinity for you to um, feel it. So I think um, the perps be having, like, big old generators, like, around the corner somewhere, and they fire them up, you know what I'm saying? And just have them running, and then that's that. You know what I mean? Then we can feel it. It affect our bodies. I know, mm. at least in my case, that's what I believe that's going on. Hmm. I don't. Well, I don't feel anything. I I do not have any electronic um, harassment stuff. But I did hear um, that machine in in Los Angeles, California, in Hermosa Beach, Torrance Beach, um, quite a few times that I made a mental note of it, and I used to like write it down. Like, what is that wind machine? <laughs> like, I did hear it. Yeah. Anyway. All right, that's all. Well, God thanks, Ms. You. You're welcome. Okay, I've got time for one more question. Okay, 301, are you there? Hello? Hi. Hey, how you doing? I'm good. How are you, yeah, Eric? Good. I'm doing fine. Hey, I just wanted to uh, let Kevin know I appreciate his call and him telling us his story. Uh sounds a lot like mine. In fact... I'm having problems with in-laws that put me in the program. And a friend basically said to me, when I told him that I was going to be leaving my wife, he looked over at me and said, well, we'll see how you feel in a couple of weeks. And, of course, after that, that's when I started getting electrocuted. That's what happened. Um, are you living in an apartment building? Um, yeah, I've been trying to uh, catch up with you, too. I talked to you once before, you know what I'm saying, a while back. Um, yeah. Yeah. Um, take my number down in a little bit before the call in shortly. Um, but yeah, um, I'm in an apartment building. But the apartment building is number of family. My whole entire family in the whole apartment building is only a fourplex, like uh, four units. I mean, and um, like number of my cousins, aunties, brothers, sisters, uh, parents live in a whole entire apartment complex. Okay. So how are they getting to you? I mean, is it like um, the neighborhood? Like just that. Yeah, like just the area in general, you know, they can, you know, like down the street somewhere around the corner, you know what I'm saying? And like I'm flooded, I'm in the city, so, you know, I'm flooded with electricity around here, you know what I mean, period. Yeah. And like all the houses is close, you know, next to each other, you know what I mean, telephone pole wires everywhere, and you know what I mean? It's like, it's, yeah, it's, it's bad, you know what I mean? Um, cable, satellite dishes. It's all on everybody's roof. It's about like a hundred of them on this one street alone. You know what I mean? It's just bad. It's flooded with electricity over here. So you don't have an idea of who may be doing it to you directly, like like oh, we do, no. like most of us. No, do. no, I do. No, I know exactly who's doing it. Okay, okay, and it yeah. was done because of retaliation because you 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 went to court on somebody, something like that. Yeah, that too, and just you know personal uh, vendettas, and you know just. Um, you know, uh, revenge kind of, revenge kind of things in that nature, you know? Yeah. Well, I'm glad you're getting some relief. Have you tried, uh, frequency, uh, EMF frequency scanner that you can get on um, YouTube? No, no, but, um, somebody, um, had came over here, T.I. came over here, um, probably about six months ago with one for me and, um, he said, I need to get out of here immediately. He was like, it's flooded with electricity. The thing was about to blow up. You know what I mean? It, it, it almost like went all the way to the top. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, no, no, no. I know what you're yeah. talking about. You, you, yeah. You're talking about a meter. No, what I'm talking about is a frequency scanner where you can actually hear, put your earphones on, and it'll just scatter the frequencies because I'm believing that either they, they're coming through your brain to hit your organs. It happened to me. It gave me some relief. It gave you 95% relief. Oh, okay. No, I never even heard of none um, about that. Go, I might have to um, get that. Go to you. Go go to uh, YouTube and look up EMF frequency scatter, and it will scatter. It will actually help you. It, it makes a sound. It'll scatter. It'll sound like it'll sound like it's raining outside real hard, but it uh, actually gives you relief. And you put your earphones okay. on and you go to sleep, and it'll cut down by ninety five percent of it. Okay, thank you. Um, I appreciate that. Take my number down and call me later. Yeah, I will. You ready? You got it? Yeah. All right, All right. good. Uh, Ella, enjoy yeah. your, your, your trip, okay? 
Thank you. Just I know you're trying local, to get away from us. Go local and yeah. get out on the beach and camp on the beach. It'll probably be cold and rainy, but I don't care. <laughs> great, great. Well, if we need to find you, we'll just ask your perpetrator. I'm sorry. Yeah, there that you wasn't go. funny. That wasn't, that wasn't <laughs> funny. I'm sorry. <laughs> you have a nice time. You deserve it. Thanks, everybody. Hang in there. And if you need anything, you can email me at FFTI org at gmail.com and I'm not going to have my radio show tomorrow on iHeart because I'm going camping. Thank you, Kevin, so much. Appreciate the interview. Thank you. I appreciate doing it.